invested in pop culture or the celebrity phenomenon, then you know a little thing or two about the award season. Every year, from November to February, award shows from the Oscars, the Golden Globes, the American Music Awards are broadcasted nationwide, showcasing the achievements of Hollywood's elite. When you look at the little trophies that are given, what do you think? Is the Oscar actually made of solid gold? Surely it can't be! And you'd be right. They're plated with precious metals by the process of electroplating. Well, what is electroplating? It involves passing an electric current through an electrolyte. This refers to a compound that produces ions when dissolved in a solution. This is achieved when two electrodes are dipped into the electrolyte and reconnecting them through a circuit, with power supplied by a battery typically. When the current is passing through the circuit, the electrolyte separates and some of the metal atoms within it are deposited in a thin layer on the surface of one of the electrodes, thus being electroplated. Many types of metals can be plated in this way, such as gold, silver, tin, zinc, copper, and cadmium. This process is comparable to electrolysis in the sense that both reactions are using electricity to split a chemical solution. Plating metal is not, o- is not the only practical use of this technique, but non-conductive surfaces like plastic, wood, and leather can also be plated by first making the material conductive. This is done when an initial coating is done with graphite, conductive lacquer, electrolysis plate, or vaporized coating. Let's quickly go over the development of electroplating. Metal coating procedures have existed for thousands of years, but it wasn't until the 1800s when Alessandro Volta's discovery of the voltaic pile slash battery, which made direct current electricity readily available, accelerated its progress. At about the same time, the battery was primarily used to deposit lead, copper, and silver. In the same year, zinc, copper, and silver were deposited on themselves and on several basis metals, the metals on which plating is applied, like gold and iron. Commercial electroplating started to ramp up during 1840-41, to and is greatly helped by the discovery of cyanide solutions, plating silver, gold, copper, and brass. A solution of cyanide and copper allows for deposits of copper to adhere directly to iron and steel. In recent years, electroplating is a big industry requiring certain engineering and technological equipment. In 1925, when chromium was introduced to the market, it illustrated repercussions within the industry as a whole. It was mainly used for the automotive and appliance fields, in which the quality of the mixture of plate nickel chromium or copper nickel chromium was proven. Since then, the standards for more critical control procedures in bath composition, temperature, and current density were reflected in better control and development of other processes. From this, hard chromium plating created a way of fixing the wear resistance of machinery in order to streamline their operation by frictional and heat resistance properties. Parts that were worn or underside were enhanced with chromium plating. How does electroplating work? First, you need to decide your electrodes and electrolyte for the specific reaction you want to make when the electric current is turned on. The atoms that will plate your substance must come from the electrolyte. So, for example, if you want to plate an object with copper, you need to have the electrolyte made out of a copper salt. Next, the electrodes need to be extremely clean, so the metal ions can form a strong bond and won't rub off easily. Usually this is done by dipping the electrode in a very strong basic or acidic solution. When this is done properly, atoms from the plating metal bond by joining strongly to the outside edges of the crystalline structure. Now for the main process of electroplating. There is a list of supplies you'll need. Generally the materials are as follows. Two electrodes from different conducting materials, an electrolyte, and an electricity supply. As stated before, one of the electrodes is made from the metal that's going to be plated, and the electrolyte is a solution of a salt of the same material. Metals like gold and silver are harder to dissolve, so to counter this problem, they have to be made into solutions using cyanide mixtures. The electrode that will be plated has to conduct electricity or no plating will occur. Both electrodes are then dipped into the electrolytic solution and then connected via circuit to the battery. One electrode becomes the anode, negatively charged, and the other becomes the cathode, positively charged. 
positive ions are attracted to the anode, which results in a slow buildup of it, forming a thin layer. On the other hand, the negative ions are attracted to the cathode, which release electrons that move through the battery towards the anode. It takes a while to see significant buildup, and it's entirely dependent on the strength of the current and the concentration of the electrolyte. Increasing these factors will see an increase in the process. If ions, electrons, and current keep moving, the plating process will continue. What can we use electroplating for? Allow me to elaborate. As we know, plastic is an extremely versatile substance. Flexible, moldable, lightweight, and easy to dispose of are some of its benefits. To enhance them even more, we can use electroplating to give them a thin coat of metal to give it all the benefits of said metal. Many plastics can be electroplated, like ABS, phenoic plastics, urea formaldehyde, nylon, and polycarbonate. You'll often find these parts on cars, plumbing, households, and electrical fittings that look metallic but are, are in fact, plastic. They're lighter, cheaper, rust-proof, and don't require any polishing after plating. Copper plating is primarily used to prevent case hardening of steel on speci specified parts. Silver plating is used on tableware, electrical contacts, and engine bearings. Gold plating is rarely used, but it's typically used on jewelry and watch cases. Zinc coatings prevent the corrosion of steel parts, and nickel and chromium plates are used on automobiles and household appliances. Electroplating is done for several reasons. Gold and silver are primarily plated for decoration, since it's cheaper than to be made out of solid substances. Zinc and tin are plated to give them a protective outer layer. An example is food containers, which are often plated with tin to resist corrosion. Car fenders combine both of these benefits by having steel plated with chromium to make them shiny and rust resistant. Not only this, but electroplating is used for making duplicates for electrotyping and electroforming. So, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this was a useful and comprehensive guide about the basics of electroplating. Bye!